What up, everybody? You're now tuned into Candid Conversations. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley. And I told y'all, sports is just the beginning, man. I'm delving into everything. But today we're going to talk music. I got a very, very special guest. Yes, it's Family Ties right here, man. Yes, family sir. Ties, man. Introduce yourself to the people. Hi, everyone. I am known as Trey Pender, but also known as Cleo the Artist. I am an R&B artist hailing all the way out of Jacksonville, Florida. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. The crib, the nine, O to the four. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I'm trying to look at my light right here, man. It's kind of kind of wonky. I'm like, what's going on with that? Yeah. Yeah. So let's. let's I'm working see. with one so, of those old college light, those little college dorm lights. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. I already, I already know. You ain't even. Gotta, you ain't even I understand. I understand, man. But, man, I appreciate you for coming on, man. man I appreciate you and, for having me, man. Definitely. Yeah, I, and, you know, like, I've been watching your growth. So, you know, I've been watching since you was little. I mean, music is something like, I mean, a fish to water um, is, is, is you and music. Like, I, the, your dad tells the story of your birth. I'm pretty sure this is exactly how it went. He said it's like a mix between the Lion King and Drumline. So, like, <laughs> after you were born, after you were born, your mom, uh, your mom gave him to you, gave gave you to your dad, and he held you up like Rafiki in Lion King. Then he wrapped you <laughs> in swaddling clothes and laid you gently on the snare, and that yep. was the first introduction. That to sound music. about right. That sound just about <laughs> right. You be, it's 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 like for as long as I can remember, like this thing has been just a a piece of me. Like you mm -hmm. you got skin on your body, but it's just like music is like a piece of me. Like it's like. It, without that, I, I wouldn't be myself, you know what I'm saying? Right. And like my right. dad has been like such a like a great influence with that. He taught me just about everything I know about music from like the age of one on now. Okay, so your 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 biggest inspiration for music is of course it was your dad. So yeah, you know, talk a little bit about your dad. Um uh, well my dad's my dad's great, honestly. Like he's he's a pretty good guy, like he's always wise and always showing me how to do stuff. Like I remember him taking me, like there were moments where he sat me down on his lap and I couldn't even touch the foot pedal. I couldn't, I could barely basically keep a rhythm, but he sat me there and held my hands like in place and taught me how to keep a pocket and do the stuff that mattered, like stuff that you wouldn't even worry about being that young of a drummer, but it made sense to instill it in me to make me like such the musician that I am now. And it's just like, it's amazing that he thought of that stuff and like he always told me, I will never forget. My dad told me that he, I was going to be great and I was going to be better than he was. And I was going to supersede him in so much. And there were times where I was like, dad, you just too good for all of this. Like, I don't, I, I can't see no way I'm going to be better than you. But it was like down the road, he just kept saying, son, look at you, look at you, look at you, look at you. And it's just like, I see it now. Like, I may not feel I'm better, but he feels like I've, I've come to a point to where I'm great and that I'm doing great things. And I see like, not only just like with my drumming, like with my singing and everything, like I wasn't always singing, but I'm, I'm good. Like I love it. And I've, I've grown to like be with that passion for it. And I can only credit him because seeing the passion that he had for playing the drums, he was there every Sunday. I don't, I've never seen him miss a Sunday or miss a service or anything from, from being on that set to go into the pulpit was like a huge example for me. And I just, I tried to keep that in my heart to make sure I never lost it. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Like you said, um, and you know, I know him of course, um, he's made man left such a mark on me as well. Um, always got the quotes, man. Always got the quotes, Forever any situation, quotes. anything you're dealing with, you know, uh, pop had the quotes for you, man. And he's, it was always any conversation you had, even if it was something where, you know, maybe you were in trouble or, you know, you're doing something you weren't supposed to do. It was never, you know, came from a place of malice. The things he talked to you about, you know, it still had warmth. It still had levity. And he still taught a lesson, you know, in the things that he would teach you. And like you said, like um, playing the drums was like the first was the first everything for you. You know, now I, I knew now about your singing. We kind of got an idea about your singing when you were little. See, I don't know if you remember this, but you used to sing Keisha Cole, Love. And 
sing it. Oh my god! <laughs> and you I do. used to my dad still yeah. like brings that up. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you used to you used to sing it at her pitch. Like and that's Keisha wild. Cole can absolutely just blow. She can as a as a youth. You used to sing that song. Um, yeah, just like that. But now to see your evolution, I remember when you sent me um your song "Me and You." And I was like, okay, man, let me check out Trey Song because I heard a little bit of the other stuff. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. let me see. And I heard that and I said, Oh man, you got you remember what I told you? I said, Man, you got some right here, man. I said, yeah. I said, R and B is dead. Like it, it it's absolutely it, it dead. It is, man. And it's and it's so sad, bro. It's, yeah. it's so sad because it's just like no one, no one, it's like no one's trying to save it. It's like, and then the people who are, it's like they're not being seen, it's not mainstream. Right. Right. Yeah. You 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 you, it, you have to go pop. Like a, a lot of people got mad at K Michelle when, and I don't think she was taking unnecessary shots at them because they're great artists in their own right. But uh, Sam Smith and um, Adele, and she was like, they sing that blue eyed soul, and you know that you know people it just go up. But R and B for the black artist is just it's it's dead. And if you look at all our great R and B artists, at some point. They did. They went pop at some point. You know, yeah, and even hip hop artists have had to go pop at some point. Honestly, because you got to fit the trend, or else you're just gonna get left behind. And it's crazy because it's just like music is for everybody. So why is it like it's not enough room for everybody? Right. 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 So and and that, that's one thing I, I really really dislike because one of my favorite genres, of course, is R and B. R&B has always been one of my favorite genres. Now, nah, hip hop started it off, but when I got hold of R&B, it was um, it was it was a different different type of. Hold feel. on one moment. You went low. I got you. You said I'm low. Yeah, I, I can barely hear you right now. Okay, because I I can hear you. That's weird. I'm finna grab my headphones. Okay, so hold. Okay, I got you. Yeah, because I, I can't hear you. Okay, I got you. I don't got a lot of tight up skirt. All right, I'm back. Okay, you okay, hear me better now? Better now? Oh yeah, I can definitely hear you now. That's great. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Okay, now I'm not hearing it no more. Okay, we good. Okay. So, um, you know, we was talking about R and B, and so like now, as far as your career and where you're going, so talk about your current, um, the current projects you just did, um, with uh, Mr. Harvey. Oh, okay. Those, um. It's a it's a it's a lot different. Um, I've learned that the gospel music industry is is fun. It's actually very fun. I've through Pastor Harvey, I've met a lot of people and I've seen a lot of things. I ain't seen too much, but I know like it's it's only a matter of time before like it's like a whole world and like unvolves before my eyes. And with him, I've been in music videos. Um, I've been in recording studios, and the one thing that he's always instilled in me is that. Be ready so you don't have to get ready. He's he's big on that, like being mm-hmm. in place and just always having like the next step, the plan. Like planning is always key to what he wants to do. There's never a moment where he don't have something planned out. And even if the plan don't go, he got like three, four plans in advance for it. Oh man. Yeah, that, that's what's up. He's um I know my um my mom knows him, of course. She works with him and she knows yeah been a you know a great resource and she talks about the things that um he talked about and things um he told her you know i've met him you know a few times you know didn't don't really have much relationship with him but just knowing through um with you and you know my mom and everybody mm-hmm. else but um his impact especially in gospel music i mean he's been doing it for a very very yeah. very long time man it's crazy yeah I, I remember him starting um well not not even starting but I think I had to be like 13 to 14. And we had, remember, we had the traveling choir with the church. Mm-hmm. So 
um, um, Eichel Berger and uh, uh, your uncle uh, Dwight. You know, we would travel and sing different places. And did you do you remember us singing um, for the Wiz? I don't, but I remember going to Sarasota a few times, and it was always because like my auntie had to sing with uh, Pastor Harvey. I remember going to Sarasota a few times. Yeah, now I went. I did go to Sarasota, um, but yeah, before before we started going to Sarasota, um, uh, I think it's um, now is it Charles? Charles Mark? It's was one of the. I can't remember which one it is, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> your your uncle and um, uh, one of the Eichelbergers, they um, had the choir. And um, they had the the Wiz was uh, came to Jacksonville, and we were the choir in the Wiz, and we got to sing in the that's Wiz. That's dope. That's dope. Like you know how good you got to be to even be considered for that. Like that's top notch. No, no it's, it's top notch, man. It's top notch. So I could say that you know, hey man, I was in a play. I, I started very early, man. I started yes, early. You did. You did start you know early, man. Yeah, but I and I always tell to anybody, stay ready, so you don't have to get ready. I mean, that's why. I prepare the way I do. That's why I come like you see me. I'm constantly on this. You're trying to get one percent better every single day and honing in on your craft. And, you know, not there's many distractions on this road, on your road to success. Like there's many, many distractions. So staying vigilant, you know, staying smart and standing on your square. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, those are those are just a few things uh, that yeah. you have to do in order to succeed, because now. Man, it's so so many pitfalls, so many pitfalls. So it's like it's it's like it's like to be successful, it's like you gotta basically you gotta give it your all. You can't you can't half do it no more. You can't just get lucky no more. You gotta you gotta put your heart out there. And the more I the older I get, the more I realize is like this is gonna take all of me. This is going to take time for one. Mm -hmm. Rome wasn't built in a day, and that's another thing my dad always told me. He said, Rome wasn't built in a day, son. You gotta be patient. And you got to realize that God is already working in provision for the things that he has for you. You just got to get there to meet him there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like you said, time, man, it takes time. And there's so many artists or just people in general and, and just about any industry you could think of. People who have instant success or they have success very quickly. It's a rare thing. Those are yeah. one percenters. So but because we can see it in live and live in color every day. People think it's something that's normal and that's not normal. You know, mm -hmm. your song that you made um, uh, four months ago, getting hot on TikTok, shooting to the top of the boards and you making 87 remixes. And now people want to cancel you because of a um, questionable video. And, you know, yeah, it's little Nas X. <laughs> I mean, it, it, stuff like that just doesn't. He, I mean, he got so big so fast. Stuff yeah. like that doesn't happen that often. It's more like a, say, Jack Harlow. Like Jack Harlow um, jumped on the scene with what's popping, but he's been making music since like 2014, like nationally. Cuz has been on it. Like, he's been on it. Like he's been on it, man. And he said in what's popping, he said, Y'all wasn't tuned in back then. And I, I feel him on that. I feel him on that, man. Because I feel like anything, that's a road that every artist like has to take to understand like who they are as that artist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you don't take that journey and then you just, instant success usually those, those people are flashes in the pan and they, they, they're gone as quickly yeah. as they came they're gone man there's so many one hit wonders and people with songs you like man I, I wonder what happened to those people mm -hmm. and yeah like you said they got there yeah oh man um what's the little what's the kid um he just got he had some crazy happen he got arrested um the whip nene kid uh oh, silent silent yeah. yeah he like didn't he kill somebody I can't remember. I, I don't, I don't want to say serious. he did. It was it's something, something it was serious, something man. serious. It was something serious. So he didn't got in some trouble, man. But yeah, that that's one of the things about getting things in your youth too. Mm -hmm. Um, I always said that would I rather have you know gotten found out, found my niche and found this talent that I have and honed it early. Like say if I realized this at 22 instead mm -hmm. of now, I said now I would have had a full decade to um to hone my craft. If I would have had a full decade, I know I maybe I would be, you know, on ESPN or Fox Sports by now, mm -hmm. or maybe I might be in a totally different space somewhere yeah. where I'm not happy, you know, mm -hmm. um, but because you, you you just don't know, man. And that's why, like you see, a lot of people who get it early, they lose it just as early. You can look at athletes, you can look at entertainers, you can yeah. look at business people. 
um, you, you, you have to, you, you going through, going through that, the, 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 the wins and the losses, getting the wins and the losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get more, you, and more, more people take more L's than some, but getting to going through the wins and the losses, it builds character and it prepares you for what's to come. Because yeah. at this point, I mean, any failures, anything you put out, it flops. People don't like it. People don't want to hear it. People don't want to purchase. People don't want to buy it. You go, okay, well, it's time to go back to the lab and it's time to make something else. Yeah, that's you know? okay. I yeah. remember it was an instance. I'll never forget this. This was like when I was um, first starting to sing and like uh, figuring out my voice. A uh, guy, I was at a studio and a guy, he wanted me to sing on the track. And I was real, real nervous about it. Like, I, Back then, I got nervous about singing. You know, my voice started shaking and everything, but I said I'd do it anyway. So I went in the studio, you know, started singing. Me personally, I knew it wasn't good. He was feeling it, but I knew that was trash. So we in the studio listening to it, you know, I'm just, all right, I guess I'll bother with it. You know, he like it, so that's all right. In comes this dude, and out of nowhere, he was like, man, who is this? They need to stop it. And from that moment on, that that like floored my whole world. Like I had never been ever like told something like that. But that was I promise you, that was one of the most humbling things, because at that moment, I was like, no one will ever say that about my voice again. That won't ever happen again. I'll always be prepared for what I got to do. And I can guarantee you, I ain't never had no flop like that in no studio. Oh, man. Yeah. Shoot, it's, but, it's, hey. it's like stuff oh, no, like go that. Ahead, go ahead. Like, stuff like that is like. You see it and it's like, OK, I learned from this, but how can I make it better? Because like for a long time, I got discouraged about it. You know, I didn't want to sing, but I had to realize like not everyone is going to like your music. Not everyone's going to like your face and what you present. So what you going to do in spite of it? Either you're going to do it or you're just going to sit down. And I don't want to sit down. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Fear. fear is strong. Fear. Fear held will hold you back. Fear will strap you down. Fear mm -hmm. will stop you from doing every, any and everything. Fear stop. Fear has stopped some people from leaving their houses because of the pandemic. You know, you know, people yeah. fear. And fear for me was me not wanting to do this because I was like, man, I don't, people ain't gonna want to listen to me. You know, I, I talk sports, you know, but I mean, I ain't no expert. I'm not an analyst. I'm not any of those things. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Nobody wants to listen. Nobody wants to hear it. But people kept encouraging me, saying that, hey, you need to do it. You need to put it out. Just start a podcast. That's what you do. Just start audio. And so I started audio, and it went from there, man. And yeah. I, it, it built. And one thing you got to, and I know you know this, you are your own worst critic. Indeed, man. You you will psych yourself out better than anyone else can. <laughs> like, it's it's ridiculous, like, the 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 amount that goes into your brain to tell you not to do something that you know that you can do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause like, um, as long as I've known you, Brandon, like your passion for sports, your love for sports is unmatched. I've never met anyone who can sit there and run all fit, all NFL teams and name out just about all their players and know they stats, man. That's a gift. Like that's, that's not something that people just do. So it's like, yeah. I knew like, you you got a gift with that man, so it's just like I knew once you started this, you just run with it, man. Because I, yeah. I love sports. You made me love sports. Like I never was like into sports like that. My dad got me into football and baseball and everything, but hanging out with you and Kobe and seeing like how you trained him and how you wanted him to you know go further with that is just like I like that. I love that sport. That made me love that sport, man. Oh yeah. Man, don't 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 bring it up, man. I was I was pissed off with him and um him, Eric, and Armand at his daughter's birthday party. Cause just looking at those three, and I'm like, y'all should be on the college football field right now instead those, of looking at me. They would have been but, some studs. Studs, studs, man. But you know, you gotta studs. you gotta be a hey, you gotta be hungry, man. Yeah. You, I'm talking about stomach growling. You have to be hungry. And you know, it's it's not for everybody. And even with sports, what what Going into sports, what sports helped me realize where my true talent lies. My true talent doesn't lie in knowing sports. Mm -hmm. My true talent lies in my ability to take in sports and be able to regurgitate it at almost the same pace I saw it at. 
Yeah, and that's that's and, freaking like that's, that's like a photographic memory, man. And that's what I realized, Trey. When I tell you, when I tell you, <laughs> one day it just hit me because I was doing um I got a segment called Brandon's Debatable Sports Take. I did with the Twenty First Man. You know, mm-hmm. that's the, um I know you've seen maybe like a couple of those. Yeah, and it's when you know I just sit five minutes and I rant on the topic, and that's when I realized me being able to recount that stuff, like the prep I did for all of those segments, minimal at best. I probably read it once and I realized that I could see something today and I can not talk about it, not see anything about it. And next week when it gets brought up, I can recite it like that. And I said, Oh man, that's, that's it. That's, 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 that's what a that's talent nasty, is. Man. That's, that's, that's great. Like people would kill for a gift like that, man. You, you working with it and I love it. But yeah, for sure, man. But I, one thing I always wanted to do, though, I'm going to go get singing lessons because, baby, when I heard you singing, <laughs> like, I was like, man, I, I got to sing. I got to sing. Even if it's just harmonizing. That's why I, I did love the choir when I was in the mm-hmm. choir, you know, but just 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 singing and harmonizing. So let's talk about your creative process, sir. My creative so what, process. What, what, goes, what goes into your creative process when you're thinking of a song? Do you start with the beat first or do you start with the lyrics first? Uh, I'm a I'll start with the beat first type of person. Um, for me, I always have lyrics and I always have these beats in my head. Like there's there's not really a time where music isn't in like going in my head. Like if I was to just go off right now, I could create a whole song just off of stuff in my head. But what I do is sometimes I'll go to YouTube and look up a certain artist and what I hear in the beat, I'll hear their voice. And it's so weird. It is, I promise you, Brandon. I'll hear their voice singing the exact lyrics that I'm thinking. And then when I sing it, it just comes out. Like it just, it starts coming out to me and I have to write it down because I can create a whole song in my head and then forget it like a second later. It's so weird. Yeah. It's like, I've realized that you got to start writing that down. These stuff is, these are gold. Like you got to write this down. But um, what goes into that is I'll listen to the beat, you know, let it go out for maybe like 30 seconds. And I'll start hearing stuff and I'll just start throwing it out there, just basically bouncing it off my own head. And when something catches me, I'll repeat it and I'll repeat it. Just keep repeating it. And then after that, it's like it's like a chain just linking up together. And what usually comes first to me is the chorus. And it's so weird because, you know, some people start off, you know, the verses first, but the chorus always comes to me because like it's always repeated and then. I'll just go in on the verse. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've um that process that you're talking about is um that's like when I'm here, when I'm here alone, when I'm home alone and I, I get creative ideas, they just come to me because I told you I entertainment is is what it is for me. It's not just sports, it's entertainment, period. Mm-hmm. And you know, I want my I want to dip my hands into everything and writing is something that I've always been able to do. I mean, being able to talk and being able to pontificate, you know, that's English that comes from writing. So um, Mm -hmm. I already, I already know that, you know, I want to be, whether it's writing for shows or movies or whatever, you know, I want to write and um, have those ideas and things like that. So anytime anything that might be funny comes to me, I forget it a lot of times as soon as I remember it, just like Mm -hmm. you said. So when I start doing, is I started and I grabbed the phone and I just start recording myself talking about it. And so mm-hmm. that way I never forget it. Now, just like with you, I'm sure there's a lot of music that the world may never hear that you're going to record. Just like there's a lot of things that I got recorded that people may never see, but it's all a part of the creative process. Yep. It's, it's, it's all necessary to get to one certain goal. It's like yeah. when I was writing me and you, I, uh, that song is actually based off uh, the relationship I had with um, my girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were. Um, I was basically I was head over heels. I was like head over heels for the girl, and using the honeymoon you know, phase. That's all. Yeah, it was the honeymoon phase, and it was just like me and you, and I just mm-hmm. it it just came me and you, clear as day, mm-hmm. and next thing you know, it started hella hard eyes for you, baby. That's oh yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, Yo, when you and open, when that, you open with that line. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like 
to this day, like after every song I've made, like no matter how much better I feel I've they've gotten, I love that song. That song is like that's that's a piece of my heart in that song. Oh yeah, 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 man. Yeah, I, you you poured it out. You poured it out for that one, man. I said, mm-hmm. man, he he really he really put soul into this, like neo soul, R and B soul. I mean that that's gone. Like that's that 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 is absolutely gone. So to hear it, but I'll I'll know it instantly when I hear it because mm-hmm. that's what we came up on. That's that's what you know. That's what we've seen and that's what we've heard coming up. It's only yeah. a few artists who can who kind of who can kind of do it today and they kind of have the voice for it. I know um one of my favorites is um Brett Fias. Yeah, has, I've been on Brett that. for a while, man. Yeah. Like yeah. that's my dude cuz like yeah. I feel like he reminds me of Avant a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, Avant was yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk we talk about R&B and Neo Soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, his um that's Private true, Room. Man. The whole yeah. album Private Room. Yeah. That man is just nasty, bro. And it's just like I look at artists like him, Jamie Foxx, and Tank, yeah. and it's just like, how do I keep that alive from my generation? Because I know it may not sound the same, but those feelings are still there. We still falling in love. We still getting heartbroken and all this stuff that R and B was based off of, and just the feelings. How do yeah. I bring that back? You know. Too. Too. You can you can make the argument that they more in their fields today than they've ever been in history. Yeah, I mean, which is which which is it is like. So why don't we have this? And it's just it's yeah. just weird. Yeah, and it's like people talk crap about Rod Wave because you know they talk about oh, is he always emotional? Is he always <laughs> in his feelings? I said, well, all he's doing is mirroring the youth today. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, like the whole spectrum of emotions from anger to sadness to regret to whatever like yeah. that's what it is today mm-hmm. i've learned that from being around so many different groups and being up here at fam you that with music people want something that they can either relate to they want to be like or that they don't went through themselves or are going through currently and yeah. artists like rod wave and brent fires like they pull at those heartstrings like the stuff they say in their songs is like stuff that you, stuff that you feel like. Um, our Brent said, he said, I I don't want you I don't want you happy unless you're with me, and that no one would ever say that for real. But that's how you feel yeah. about stuff certain times, and like to yeah. put that out in a song, bro, like you can't help but relate to that. Oh shoot, um, I think it's a new magic wand by Tyler the Creator. He mm-hmm. says the sixty forty isn't working. I need a hundred of your time. I yeah, said, oh, yeah. Oh, he's another how? artist that like surprised me with like how he switched over with his style. Oh yeah, um, um, Igor is like I, I I never paid attention to him, didn't listen to him at all. Um, it, especially after Yonkers, and I was like, man, this dude is weird. You know, yeah. and I seen, <laughs> seen a little bit of his show, Loader Squad, and I was like, oh, he's hilarious. They're they're pretty funny. Yeah. Um, and then our future and those guys, of course, I love Frank Ocean to death. I wish Frank would just come back and make some music, man. Please. Yeah, Please. love Frank Ocean to death. Uh oh, oh, Pastor Palmer in the building. All right. Good music, yes sir. Pastor in here. Yes sir. Hey, yeah, I'm my daddy here. Ready? Let's get it. Yes sir. Yes sir. I appreciate y'all oh, for Pop. tuning in. Yeah, appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. But dude, just just and dude, me and you. We had uh, so much, so much music over the years. Um, we go back and forth on and stuff where mm-hmm. I'd be like, "Hey, have you heard?" And of course, you're like, "Oh man, I heard this." I mean, it never, it never failed. Anything I that I heard just... that I really, really love, and you'd be like, "Yo, I know exactly what you're talking about." Mm-hmm. Like when I first got introduced to Brent Fias, and that was on the crew, uh, song crew with Gold Link, mm-hmm. and then um, he dropped that uh, Gang Over Love. And I was like, hey, have you heard that gang of love? And you started singing it. I said, like, that's my dude right there. <laughs> exactly what we like, man. Yeah, you know, man. Exactly what we like. So right now, somebody, an uh, artist calls you up and they say, come open for me. And you you packing your bags, you going to go open for them, you going to go on the 100 City Tour with them. What artist would you most like that to be? Like the artist, that's the artist you get on the phone. And you just like, uh, 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 uh. Uh, you, you, I mean, you, either out of Chris Brown or Brent Fires, because it's just like, no, nah, I say either Chris Brown or Bryson Tiller. 
because I've been listening to Bryson Tiller a lot lately. His anniversary album, man, I like he hasn't been making music in a while, and I've always loved Bryson Tiller. Like, I have a whole category with at least thirty of his songs in it that I can just play them all and don't have to skip any. And yeah. So like th- those two artists, it's it's so hard to choose between them, but I probably say Chris Brown because that's I modeled a lot of like my dancing and just how like performing wise, like I just I want to bring that energy, and I feel like just learning that from him, like I'm sure to be on the right path because like besides Michael Jackson, that's one of the best entertainers I've ever seen. Uh, Chris Brown is a just like Usher. Usher, it, yeah. Usher for me. Usher's for me. But Chris Brown, um, me and him, like we were on the same age. Tell me, we knew he was going to say Chris Brown. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Usher. Usher was it. Um, was 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 out my Chris Brown back in the day, and I love Chris Brown today too. Mm-hmm. But Michael Jackson was. I mean that dude there. Like I cried when Michael Jackson passed. Like that's I how did much, too, man. And I, I ain't never cried much. over no artist like that before. But that that hurt. That hurt. Yeah, yeah. And his his creative. Yeah, I man, I would man, I would have loved to have met Michael, man. And it's funny his creative process, man. Is it, it? It sounded strange, but it made sense. So they said, um, one thing that Mike would do is when he wanted, he would walk around and he just bang on stuff, just bang on mm. stuff. And he'll bang and he'll ping, boom, ping. Oh, that one right there. And they said they, that sound right there, they'll record it and they'll put it in the beat. And that's how he they would make stuff up. That's crazy, man. I said, man, that's crazy. Say MJ changed the way videos were done forever. Yeah. 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 He trendsetter, man. Trendsetter. Honestly, Dude, man. even though he called a lot of flack for his video, and you know, it is what it is, but Lil Nas X. One thing you can't I can't say about him, his creativity, especially when it comes to music videos, is unmatched today. I mean, you yeah. got a few artists that may come that, cl- that close, but I compare him to Missy Elliott and Buster Rhymes back in the day, two of the mm-hmm. most creative music video artists, and Janet Jackson too. Um, but most creative uh artists when it comes to making music videos that I had ever seen. Yeah, because I watched the video as weird as it was, it was just like you gotta be like, who thinks of this stuff? Like, who would think Man. of this? Yeah. Who who would even think of that? Yeah. Yeah. When I saw it, I said, "Golly!" It's it, but that's that's his his whatever his creative process is. Like, yeah, because he he's he's did it for just about everything he's done, man. But mm-hmm. hey, I've seen they taking his his streaming, taking his song off of pretty much all streaming platforms. Yeah. They took it off YouTube. That's crazy. Spotify, I've never seen something like that happen. Apple. Um, uh, he said he was uh, letting you stream it to P Hub, which is hilarious, and he actually uploaded it there so people can't go listen to it on there. For the uh, crowd that knows what that is, uh. <laughs> he said the music industry is destroying a young man that had a great kid song. Yeah, and I like what he said because he said that you know he said for all my life you know I was told that you know I was going to hell because of you know mm-hmm. my orientation. And he said, now that I've gone there, y'all hating. Like, what, what are you talking about? And I said, that's that's pretty funny, man. Like, I don't think he takes much, much uh, very seriously. But he talks he about he talks about his song. And he said that the Old Town Road was not a kid's song. Old Town Road was a just it was he said, I'm talking about cheating on my girlfriend and sipping lean. During yeah, like that was not, it's a, not a kid song at all. He said it just took off with the kids. But and that's where you have to you don't put um, artists and athletes and entertainers and all those people on a pedestal and you don't let your children idolize those people. Yeah. Because that's that's what happens. You 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 allow that and these children get lost and think, OK, that's that's how we, we should be. You know, that's how I got to be to fit in. And OK, it, it's just like. You got to learn like you are your own person, no matter how you feel or what you feel like you, you got to be yourself. But also not like you just I don't know. It's just like it's so confusing on the stuff that these kids have to deal with and see. Because like I didn't I didn't experience that when I was like their age. Like it's so much open to their sight now. Oh, yeah. It's a click of a button now, man. Anything that you could think of is right at any all the kids fingertips um, right now. 
And I'm going to ask you this, since you're in the industry, and I want to know if you notice this, but I feel like today the art has been lost. So uh, for the most part, you have some artists who are, you know, they, yeah. they're still into the I can, art. I can agree. Art. Yeah, but now it's no longer about who's good and who's the best at what they do. It's about who's most popular. And that just that's just yeah. not music either. That's most industries now where it's not about who's good. It's about who's the most popular. They just selling faces. Yeah. Because you, you can't tell me. No, no offense. And it's some of these artists I listen to, but you can't tell me that artists like Brent Fires and people who are not like mainstream, like Lil Pump, like you can't tell me like you'd rather listen to Lil Pump over someone who has some substance. Like music is losing a lot of substance. And I and you can't say that it still has it because it's just like you saying the same thing over and over again. And like you you influencing people to not do things that like is I don't know. I just don't get it. Like, why is this popular? Like, why do we like it? I don't sometimes I don't even get why I like some of the music I like, but I have to sit there and realize what sounds good. What are they aiming? Yeah for my ears and they get you with the beats. They get you with what you see in the music videos because kids these days, they think that it's all about glam, bling. You got to have a necklace on. You got to have a big old wristwatch and whatever. And the moment that they see that, that's like, okay, I'm drawn to it, especially our young black men. Our young black men feel like if you ain't got a pole in your in your music videos, like you, you're not doing, you're not living that lifestyle. And, that's what you're seeing. Like I see more and more youth, like people, kids that I knew was that was never like this, that never pick would have thought to pick up a gun, doing music videos now, just like holding them there, like it's okay. Like no, no, you see them right. doing that, but that's a prop. You holding something real that can take your life. Yeah, yeah. They ain't, oh, yeah. They ain't gotta worry about someone trying to kill them, but you do. You live right. in the real world. Right. Say the treats of fame taste great until you get cavities. Let's go with another good, good quote. He, That's I told you, he keep the quotes. He keep Listen, the quotes man. in his back. Hey, he keep it in his back pocket. He keep them in the little black book. I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. Man. I saw it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, you're exact. You're exactly right, man. Because there's no way. There's no way that a Takashi Six Nine should be doing what he's doing in the music industry. Right now, because we but we know what those views are. Those views, people want one people one they uh, I think it was I don't know if it's the Joker or who said it, but the one thing that people love is a hero. But what they love more than a hero is to see the hero fail or die trying. And mm -hmm. so people just like abject craziness. They love to see the shit they like a fool. Burn. Yeah, they like and a they, fool. They want to see the ship burn down. They want to see that. They want to see the train wreck. They want to see the crash. They want to see people do stupid things. That's why you got these kids doing stupid things to go viral. But like yeah. the girl who licked the ice cream. Like it was so stupid. Like, why, why would you do these things? But that's it's the sign of the times. That's just that's just what it is. And um, I can't remember the artist, but he was doing his music. His music wasn't very popular. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, well, what am I doing wrong? What I need? He's like, man, dye your hair and get some face tattoos. And he did it. And his music started to take off. And which is crazy. You know, Beyonce spoke on that a long time ago. She said that, you know, back in the day when uh, talking about Nina Simone, you just heard her voice. You didn't have no pictures. You mm -hmm. didn't see her. You were just able to enjoy the art. You didn't know who she was dating. Yeah, you but you knew that was Nina Simone. But you knew it was Nina Simone. But today it's about everything else that encapsulated they, so the artists' lives that they lead takes precedent over the music that they put out almost today. Yeah, because if talent isn't talent, don't make it no more. Like you can you you cannot be able to rap, hop, skip, or jump. But if you can sell what they trying to sell, mm -hmm. they gonna put you up there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. crazy because it's just like you. I didn't realize that when I was younger. Like they. That all of that stuff don't matter to them. They just worry about money and selling what selling that product, selling that product. And it's crazy because it's just like that make that makes young artists like me not not want to sign deals and feel like we're gonna get trapped in stuff. But it's just like, how do we how are we supposed to make it like either independent or sign a deal and sign your name in blood? It's just like 
it's so much. Yeah. See, technology is replacing talent in the music yes. industry. Man, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Man. It is. You you ain't it's, know this much about auto tune when T Pain was doing it, but now like it's just everybody. Everybody's all you all you hear that you all you hear that in everybody's voice now, man. He sounded yeah. like Chewbacca on the track. Everybody. Like it's it's ridiculous now, man. But um now one thing about it, even with all this said, anybody who's listening, you might think you might have a bad view of the music today, but all you you gotta all you gotta do is see the forest through the trees. You gotta look for little it's little pockets, it's little pockets, it's artists who are really, really good at what they do. Like one yeah. of my favorite artists, and you know, some people might not like him, some people might like him, but one of my favorite artists is Kodak Black. Kodak is a very soulful individual, man. I mean, he, it bleeds through his music, you know. It does, I, and it's so weird because he's a rapper, you wouldn't expect that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he, if we if, if hip hop soul was a category, Kodak Black would be in in that category, man. It's it, it's crazy, man. And you listen to him, and one thing that people love more than anything, you know, people love the fakers, but they love to see fakers get exposed. But people mm -hmm. love authenticity. You're real. That's why they love DMX so much. DMX was you know one of the most authentic people walking the planet because he didn't put on. He it wasn't a show. He, you know, he didn't, you know, they say even when he traveled, you know, he didn't travel with a huge posse, you know, mm -hmm. he wasn't stuck up. He was just a down to earth guy who basically lived what he spoke. Yeah. Like you could walk up to him and like, he would shake your hand, but it's like people nowadays, you can't, you can't do that to them. It's like, they feel like they are on a different level, but it's a, it's a, it's a level of humbleness that you have to have in order to, to keep your mind intact or else you're going to lose yourself in that industry. Yeah, 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 man. And oh, my dad is forever I, telling me that it's sharks that those people are sharks, and I believe it because it's just like seeing seeing all these artists who uh, can't release their music, and mm -hmm. I'm like, how did y'all not read y'all contracts? And it's just like they didn't, they didn't they read didn't. their contracts. They didn't. They got flashed that money, that money. They got caught yep. up in that money, and it's just like, nah, that ain't that ain't that ain't even what I want. I don't even want that money, like. I know that I'm gonna be well, you know, wealthy, but I don't have to be no billionaire. Like, I just want to help the people. Like, my biggest thing is that when I get this stage, what can I do with it? Who can I help? Like, there are so many people that won't ever see someone do something what I do or won't ever get to make a million dollars, but I want to help them. I want to show them how to do that. I want to give them a job and say, hey, I believe in you because somebody believed in me. My family believed in me and a lot of families don't. Yeah. A lot of these boys stories, a lot of these rappers, I got it on my own. I did it on my own. That ain't my story. And I'm yeah. proud of that. That ain't my story. I had, I had a family. I had love behind me and that's why I am how I am. Foundation. Foundation, man. See, there are some great artists that are coming that will take you back to when music was music and one one particular is that boy Cleo, aka Trey Pender. Hey, <laughs> yes, sir. So <laughs> hey, real, real R and B. Let's see. Let's see, most artists are broke. I interviewed tons of them. Yes, yes. I matter of fact, I seen Kodak do the it's it's the funniest thing. It's a video of him. He talking about uh this girl asking him for the money, and he was like, so, I do not have no money. What's good, cousin? He's like, I do not have this money. This is prop money. I don't have nothing. Yeah, I have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. yo, he not lying though, because it's just like they fronting all this money and like all this stuff y'all see them handing, like, nah, bro, that ain't real money. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They didn't been loan this money. They gotta get this back to these people. They in base you basically in debt to these people right now. Yep. Yeah, you are. And, and it's a it's a it's a false sense of like. I don't know. It's just it's they make it seem so so just heavenly, and it's it's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine. Um, let's see, Jamisia. Hey, Brandon, the cousin, y'all rock, man. Appreciate that, Jamisia. Hey, cousin, you know. Um, man, what was I about to say? Oh, well, talking about artists and them being broke, man. Mm -hmm. 
it, it looks like a, I, and I, I told, I talked with my sister, and you know, we had these conversations. It'd be like late at night, we'd be outside chilling and mm-hmm. talk. Yeah, I miss those convos. Man, we had some great conversations, man. And she talked about how she's like, yeah, these music artists and entertainers, they make more than you know the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, and this and that. And I told, her, I said, I said, even with that said, I said they make a great, great sacrifice. I mean, fame comes at a price. It really does. It comes at a price. It's a lifestyle that not many of them can lead. And it chews up and spits out majority of people that are on that are in that whatever lane they're in when it comes mm-hmm. to fame. It chews up more and spits more out than those who actually succeed. Especially like when you when you look at these ch- child stars and like appreciate that, Dwight. Thanks. Uh. Like when you look at these child stars and like people who have been in the music industry from like such young ages and how like they come out and be like, oh, this wasn't how it was. Like this was kind of hell. Like I had to do a lot of sacrificing to get this. And like it's all of that that we don't see behind the scenes. And it's just like you got to really understand that. You got to have something other than just yourself. It's going to take more than just you. You cannot do this alone. Yeah, you, you can't. Your foundation, man, your foundation. Say when you get inside the industry, then you can create a door or create a record label to help other young artists. Yeah, yeah that's what I right. want to do. That's, yeah, you're right. And I, I was talking to, um, matter of fact, I did a, sh- a show with him. I think that was Monday um, with Mr. Uh, Mr. Sean. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember him, but he's been, you know, everybody's known him for a long time. Your dad, my mom, everybody. And um, I was talking to him the other day. He was training. And I told him, I said that, I said, me pursuing this path is solely because I know I have the talent to do so. And because I want to help those around me, it is not to make me happy. It is not to get rich. It is not to chase clout. It is not any of those things because wow. Brandon has found his happiness already. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not, not, not necessarily content where I am, but I'm in a very good place already. And I know that it's not going to take much to satisfy me. You know, I don't have to. I can I can make forty five grand for the next twenty years, and I'll be a millionaire at the end of the, at the end of those twenty years, and be mm-hmm. ready to retire. You know, in in a couple years after that, and I I know that because I will be able to manage my money well. So, making tons of money, no, any money that I make or anything that I do, it's going to be to enrich the lives of those who help me get to where I am, and then to those who are less fortunate than I, because. Like I'm a man. Like I'm very. It's very. I'm very simple, man. I don't need a whole lot. Like yeah. Like it, I, it don't. It don't take much for me. Like I don't. I don't need no. Like I don't need to be iced out. Of you see me. I keep this chain that my father gave me. Passed down. I keep. That's all. That's what I keep around my neck. I don't. I don't need no jewelry. Like all of that stuff is because like you can't. You can't. You can't take it with you when you leave. It's yeah. like none of that matters. Like when you leave, bro, you just got your soul. And if my yeah. soul. If my soul ain't golden, then what's the point of having gold on me? Yeah. yeah. That's just gonna make the gold dirty. Yeah. There it is, man. And your impact, the impact that you leave and the legacy that you leave, you know, um, and the impact that you had on the people around you. I think that that's very and very important. You know, mm-hmm. you know, people always mess with me, you know, because you know, I'm 32 and they always talk about you know, my family's worrying about me and, you know, getting married and having kids. And, you know, that's not in the cars right now. I got too much to work on. I got too much to pursue because that, that's a distraction um, right now. It happens. It happens. It don't. It don't. It doesn't matter to me because I know that I don't need to have kids to leave a legacy because mm-hmm. think of any great person or, you know, that you could think of, regardless of what their industry was and what they were into. Do you remember their children or the, and their spouse or do you remember the work that they did? Like the work that they I remember Malcolm X for Malcolm I'm because it was a great woman in her own right. I remember her for the things that she did, not because she was married to him and not because they have children. You know, the legacy that mm-hmm. you leave behind, you know, is what you did to impact the world and impact others around you. I completely get uh, that. I, I agree. See, do I say learning and applying the business of music is where industry success is developed and birth? Mm hmm. Yes, sir. You see, boy, you sound like your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you see. I'm trying, Pop. I'm trying. Two things in life will happen for sure. In life, someone will wash you when you are born and when you die. Oh, 
Yes, sir. Wow. Man, wow. that's that's it. That that's it. My, one of my favorites, um, by the great yeah. philosopher Morgan Freeman, um, and lean on me. He said, All I have to do, I only have to do two things in this life that stay black and die. That's only two <laughs> things I really so i I'm accomplished. I'm accomplished. I've accomplished everything I need to accomplish in this life. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm black. I'm not going to be anything other than black. And one day I'm going to pass on. So I'm, yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'm doing exactly what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know you came up um, pretty much in the internet era. And so you don't remember what music was like before the internet. But I mean, it was a it's dude. It's it's a different world today. Like that's like you take any take a ten year old right now and just put them in nineteen ninety. I mean, they're gonna die. Yeah, Ain't no Wi Fi. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't know how to function. <laughs> yeah. There's no Wi Fi. There's no Apple Music. There's no Spotify. There's no Pandora. Um, dude, I don't even think we had CDs. Have YouTube. Then. Well, no, you, there's no YouTube. Um, yeah. And then if it is YouTube, it's in its baby stages. Like there's only like five minute videos. I think mm-hmm. that was the longest you could do on YouTube. Um, but before the Internet, like music, I, I think you know, music was different. But the Internet put the music industry on steroids, man. And one yeah. of the pioneers as far as music on the Internet, he gets his credit little bit by little bit. But he needs his full credit, and that's Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy yeah. revolutionized music and on yeah. the internet. Soldier I mean, Boy, like that's one person that you really can't forget. Like Soldier Boy was, he was the man when I was growing up. Like he was the man. Like he was the one that you saw with the phone. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody wanted to be Soldier. Everybody wanted to have what Soldier had. So it's just like you you yeah. got to pay homage to that because it's kind of swept under the rug how they did and like. You you would think that Soldier was like one of those people that had one hit wonders, but nah, buddy, been on. Yeah. Oh yeah. He said we recorded jam sessions with cassette tapes. Oh man. Oh my god. I don't even know what hey. a cassette tape is. <laughs> Dude, man, listen, man. I used to record songs off the radio uh, with a cassette tape, and I had a cassette tape player. It was about about this big. Used to have it on my hip, had my little. I had the headphones that just got had the little fuzz on the end of it, had the little uh-huh. line across the top. And dude, I used to walk around my cassette tape, man. That was before we had CD players. Oh my and goodness! I used to rock the cassette tapes, man. That's and crazy. Say so at forty, I took a risk. Early retired from twenty years in public school system. Now at forty-seven, I'm extremely successful in ministry and music production. Following your passion is worth the risk. Do your homework and take the leap. Hey, that's what anybody out there who's dragging their feet on accomplishing their goals or setting out to do what they wanted to do. All mm-hmm. you have to do is do it. It knows no age limit. Get out there and do it. One of the, um, I can't think of the lady's name, but she was in the Black Panther when they had the little council. She was the real the older lady. She mm-hmm. started acting at like 86. You know, she just decided she wanted to act one day. Never acted in her life. Took some that acting classes. Was, is a success now. Oh my goodness, man! It's, it's all about you. Just gotta go for it. Like you got, you yep. can't be afraid to go for it. Oh, like yeah. uh, Lucky Day is another artist who like is helping bring them R and B back. Um, I, I when I look at him, I I was like, okay, when he first came out. I'm thinking maybe he's 24, 25. The man is in his 30s. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, where have you been? But it's just like, maybe that's when he wanted to come on. It's just like, he has like a different perspective now because being so being so so much older than like the average person, he writing songs about stuff that's like, I ain't even heard of. Like the man's music is is fire. If you haven't heard of him, he's he's a great artist. I got to I got to check him out. Hey, appreciate yeah. that. Hey, hey the, um, as you see, Pastor Palmer, I'm going live tomorrow with him. So y'all check that show out. He has right, um, his yeah. podcast called Let's Talk Under the Tree. Really good brother. I appreciate him giving me some of his time. So y'all check us out tomorrow. Then we're going to go live around 6 o'clock. Appreciate you, uh, Mr. Leander. See, if you were rich, if you had cable TV and could watch MTV. Yo, when my <laughs> mom got cable. <laughs> yo. When, dude, I remember I came home after school one day. I think I was in middle school. 
and I seen the cable box on the TV and I turned it on to, to uh, Cartoon Network and um, um, what's the, it, it's, it's a segment that comes on. Oh, I can't think of the name of it, but they show like all the anime shows on it. Man, it hasn't been that oh, long. Oh, I think I know. Tsunami. About. Did it? Yeah, Tsunami. Yeah. Tsunami. So Tsunami comes on and Dragon Ball Z comes on. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, I, I thought we was rich. I thought we was rich. <laughs> I we was rich. tell you nothing. I said, I said we, we paid up in here. <laughs> you know, I'm, yo, I'm drinking chocolate milk watching Dragon Ball Z, man. Oh, my goodness. He propped oh, up yeah. and all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So what is next? For Kid Cleo, what is next? Uh, what's next? Um, I'm actually working on a little EP right now. Um, it's gonna be like five songs. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's gonna be coming out. I want it. I want it to be coming out around maybe in the next two months. That's what I'm working on. I've been in the studio recently, you know, just getting stuff recorded because that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing for me. Is like it's always in my head, but I just have to get it out of my head for me to feel like, okay, now I can create something else. Like if I can't get it out of my head, I don't want to start anything else because that's how you get unfinished projects. And I've learned from that because like you can't just start a song and not finish it because you'll miss out on what was for that particular song. Mm -hmm. Man. And I've yeah. learned that like interludes, like every song doesn't have to be three minutes, you know, whatever you feel for something, you have to feel it and take it and let it be that you can't try to do some more with this try to do extra with this like you got to actually feel it and let it be what it is because the more you try to make it less authentic or not you it's like it just sounds like all it sounds the same basically you start sounding like everybody else mm -hmm. oh yeah and i don't yeah. i don't want to sound like everybody else i want to sound like cleo you know I, when they hear cleo like i want to sound like me one thing i can say about um Artist came out of Jacksonville. I don't know if you remember him, YK Osiris. Oh, of course. He played football with Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. He and he actually he went to the church too. I remember yeah. my mama taking him home. Like, mm -hmm. and it's it's just crazy to see him like that. Um yeah, well, I've one been thing I like about him. Yeah, one thing I like about him is that he did something different. I it was a while before you heard a song like, I would give you the world, baby girl. Like, ain't nobody doing that no more. But he he took a chance with going back to like an older style and it was successful yeah 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 i mean but that's the music industry trey mm -hmm. uh, if you notice that all it does is, and that, that's time period i realize that time is on the loop things repeat itself and that's mm -hmm. in the music industry all they're doing is taking older music and they're recycling it i mean that's just what it is the mm -hmm. you know do you have some original stuff today but a lot of them, they take it and they have their own spin on it because and I understand, um, let's say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And so stuff that you hear growing up, the beats, the music, the artists, they imitate those artists. They imitate those songs. They imitate the beats. They imitate the lyrics. That's what they do. And yeah, so he took a page mm -hmm. from 90s R&B and he made it. He made it successful. Yeah, man. Let's see. Journal them, son. They're still finding music Prince wrote and never recorded, but he wrote them down. Yeah, that's wow. Yeah, um, Andrew 3000, uh, three stacks. Um, three said he talked about it. He said, He said, when I pass on, he said, they're gonna find hours and hours and hours of music that no one's ever heard. He said, because he he lives, he said, he stays alone for the most part and he just records music and just you know, just make music. And that I and and what I'm doing now is kind of the same thing because I have things now that I recorded and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna put it out, but I may use it one day. I don't know, but I think from no matter what, no matter what, um, no matter what you're doing, if you are in your element, if you're in your industry, and you're doing it. It's it's always I, I liken I liken it to practice. Like me doing mm -hmm. this now, this is practice for me. Yeah, like a lot of people. Yeah, one day it's, it's going to be a bigger stage that you're going to be called to, and being on this one prepares you for the next. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. But man, oh, we did an hour already. See, man, see, we having good conversation. Man. That's crazy. Yeah, it's been an hour already. I don't even feel like it's been an hour, man. Yeah, man. It just, it don't even seem like it. Just 
But hey, hey, but that 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 just that's the that's the family ties right there, man. Anytime you're yeah. with family, and family extends beyond blood, you know. Anytime you're with family, you know, you it, it's always a great feeling, you know. Mm. Now being by myself, I that's when one of the things that helped me realize, which I always knew family was important, but being on your own helps you realize that yo, like family is where it's at because yeah, you get out yeah. in the world, you get out in the world and you realize that. People don't care. No, like, yeah, people like no, people will straight up tell you like to your face like, I could give a crap about how you feel right now, because yeah. you you don't serve me a purpose. A don't lot of serve a just, purpose. Yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> wow, that's the world though. That's the world. That's the world, and it's cold. Once you realize that, it gets real cold. But the warmth is those who are closest to you. The warmth is family. The warmth is friends. The warmth is loved ones. Is those people that you cherish the most, you know, and being there for them and doing for them. Those are the things that, you know, bring you joy, man. You know, I love spending time with my mom, you know, love spending time with my dad, you know, my nieces, my nephews, mm -hmm. sisters, brothers, cousins. I mean, family is everything, man. And it's at the end of the day, really, I mean, that's, that's, that's all you have. Yeah, a lot of people come come like, and a lot of people end up in this world alone. But it's just like me having my family behind my back and knowing like, I got a big family. Like, we got big family. Like, you yeah. being like my big brother. Like, I know I got brothers. Like, I was born an only child, but I know I got brothers, and that's something yeah. that I, I prayed to God about. You know, I always wanted brothers, and he yeah. he granted those to me. So and, I, and like knowing now that I have those, it's just like. I think I, I'm thankful for that because y'all helped me become like who I am. Yeah. Hey man, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be a part of this journey to be able to pass on whatever I could be able to teach you whatever, whatever I could. I always been there and I always be here whatever yeah. it is. Anytime, you know, you can pick up the phone and say, Hey, Hey B, I got this going on. I got that going on. And Hey, matter of fact, I got to come to Tallahassee to see you. Like I haven't been up yeah, there. Man. Yeah, yeah, I gotta come up. I gotta come up there and see you, man. You gotta spend some time. But hey, you come back to Jacksonville. Hey, I need to see you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make sure. Like I'm. I, I think I'm gonna be like back. Maybe like uh, probably in the next month or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll we'll definitely chop it up, man. But I appreciate you for coming on. Hey, let them know your social media, um, YouTube, and everything where they can find you and where they can listen to your music. Definitely for sure. Um, my Instagram handle is the dot kid dot Cleo. That's K L E O. You know, in case y'all don't know how to spell Cleo and you want to spell it with a C, no, it's okay. But um, other than that, my YouTube is. Cleo the Kid, and if you want to find me, I suggest that you look up um, one of my songs specifically because it's a lot of Cleos on YouTube, surprisingly, you know, yeah. but um, look up probably my latest album, which was Naked, or one of my latest songs, which is Ride, and that's available on YouTube. I encourage everyone to go listen to it because it's a good song to bump in your car when you drive, you know, and I got plenty more music coming on the way. Yes, I can attest. The music is good, people. <laughs> yes. The music is good. Yes, yes. Hey, man, but I appreciate you for, for joining me. Y'all remember you, to man. like, share, and subscribe. And I told you, going live tomorrow, um, me and uh, uh, Leander Palmer, the host of Let's Suck Under the Tree podcast. I mean, he's been doing work over there, man. He interviewed um, Thelma from Good Times um, like two weeks ago. Yeah, oh, she wow. looked good, too. You know, she in her 60s. She still looked good. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, he's all he's um going to interview uh JJ from Good Times, I think next week That's pretty as well. Cool, man. So man, That's hey, he cool. he got it popping. So he he told me he said, Hey man, I'm coming on, I'm ready to come on your show whenever you're ready. And so man, I'm hey, I, I'm I'm humbled, man. I'm being Go recognized ahead, by those I'm I'm gonna tune in. Yeah, I'm being recognized by those who are already where I'm trying to be, man. And it's a great, great feeling. Mm-hmm. They say they're all good. Man, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Got more stuff coming, man. But, hey, I will talk to you guys later. We deucing out, man. Deuces. Thank y'all once again. <laughs>